So Reed, um, the first question I had was kind of stepping back and thinking about this mission in the continuum of human spaceflight, the continuum of uh, the Apollo program, Artemis, you know, I realize you're very busy in training right now, but have you and the crew really given some thoughts to that? And what are your feelings so far as you're starting to navigate that situation? We've definitely given a lot of thoughts about where we stand. And, and to us, really, uh, it's, it's our crews on the International Space Station that we've been crewing for about 24 years now. Um, that is where we feel like we're carrying that torch uh, from, from them forward. Um, and we have said since, since we knew we were flying together, Artemis II is all about Artemis. It is not about Artemis II. It is going out and checking out SLS, Orion, making sure Orion is as ready as it possibly can to do a crude landing or to start assembling gateway or whatever the agency needs us to go do next. But it is looking at those next crews and how can we best posture Orion for that. As somebody who's flown so many vehicles over the years, what are you most looking forward to with Orion? Uh, with Orion, I'm looking forward to being those first humans that get to sit on Orion and really look at it, not from the perspective of can it get this job done, but can it get the whole job done? I think we are really fired up for that because we know Artemis goes to the moon and then humanity goes to Mars, and that gets us going. Uh, if I have a chance, you're going to manually fly Orion. We will, for sure. Talk about your expectation for that as a test pilot. Uh, it will be amazing to manually fly, but it is very important to me that Victor flies, that Jeremy flies, and that Christina flies. I want as many human hands on this vehicle as possible because this is not being built for a couple of test pilots. This vehicle is being built to send humanity to the moon and onto Mars, and that is the goal. How are you feeling in terms of yourself, your family, the opportunity for Canada? Can we talk a little bit about that before going into the mission? Yeah, for me, uh, it's a little bit hard to believe. Um, I think it's still sinking in various levels. Um, it's really meaningful to talk to my family about it, to share that with my wife and children, my parents, and uh, to see how authentically excited my kids were for me. I thought that was really meaningful, it really touched me. Um, but bigger you know, than all of that, you know, this mission isn't really about me. Um, I feel a great sense of pride for Canada. And that really hit me today. Like I felt it before, but today I'm like, oof hit me really hard. Um, it was so awesome to see NASA, the United States, showcasing Canada as part of this mission because, and not as a gift, because they we bring real value and we're a valued member of this team, so much so we have an astronaut on the first crewed mission of the Artemis program and see Minister Champagne there on stage as part of the announcement. I just hope Canadians understand how big a deal this is it's not because of me it's because of thousands and thousands and thousands of people over decades who have taken step after step overcome challenge after challenge i've witnessed some of them along the way it's not easy to do this and they brought us to this point this is not our pinnacle this is not the. this is not the end this is just the beginning imagine what we're going to do next for I'm sure really proud of that um, I know that the mission plan is still happening, so you can maybe can't say everything yet, but as far as you can understand it, what are your duties going to be? What are you going to be working on while you're up there? Yeah, we really don't have any distribution of, of duties yet as a crew. I mean, we've talked a little bit about that. Um, we know we'll have a lot to do, and we know we have to divide some of it up. We also have talked about you know making sure we get like as many hands flying the vehicle um, so that you know we have more astronauts with that experience, more perspectives on things. You know that when you do test a vehicle, you do want as many perspectives as you can get, as many inputs into your data set. And so I'm expecting some really challenging and rewarding test work. And I just don't know what that looks like yet, but that kind of gets me pumped. I like that stuff. Yeah, no kidding. And actually, that kind of blends to my next question, which is that has been your career, you know, a large part of it, testing, uh, using vehicles in high performance situations. And so what are you really looking forward to when you get your hands on Orion? Yeah, I mean, it'd just be fun for me to um, learn a new system and uh, and kind of put it through its paces because mm -hmm. that's we... We were talking with the flight directors recently who are working this mission, and you know we want to buy down as much, much risk on this mission for Artemis III. So we're not just going to try and get out and back. We're actually going to stress the vehicle intentionally right? because Artemis III will put new stresses on the vehicle, new demands, and we want to get as many of those out of the way. So that, that excites me. Um, 
Yeah, I think I'll leave it there. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, can we talk about the background group, which is obviously not only the Canadian astronauts, but also everybody at the Canadian Space Agency, the folks that you're working with in Canada? Like, what are you looking forward to in terms of their support? How are they stepping up already? Because I'm sure you have had a lot of offers, you know. So what's going on? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, ha I feel like I have the full support of the agency already. Some of them are right behind your camera. Um, helping me, um, you know, and helping us communicate this message. Um, you know, I, I think it just, it harkens back to what I've already said. I mean, I, I, I hope that all the members of the Canadian Space Agency, our industry, academia, our engineers, our scientists, like I hope they see themselves reflected in this win. And it's important in life to celebrate your wins. This is a huge win for Canada. I want people to celebrate it. I want them to feel a part of it. And I want them to know that their part mattered. You know, this is a thousand drops in the bucket that added up to okay. make this a reality. Can you tell me a little bit about what each of the crew is going to be giving as individuals to this? I don't know what their roles are, but what kind of traits are really going to be beneficial from each of them on the crew? Yeah, when you, people have asked, you know, how do you come to assign this crew? And you can see that they're all um, individually very talented. But when you select a crew, it's how do they work together? I mean, that's what a team is all about. And so you can look at each one of those individuals and, yeah, Reed and, uh, you know, Victor, great pilots. Jeremy's a great pilot, and they can do, uh, you know, that, those piloting skills. Um, but it's how do they work together. And you can imagine living in a capsule for more than 10 days. It doesn't matter how technically capable you are. It's how are you as a human. And... You know, how do you share that message with the world? And that's what we look at with this crew. I have no doubt about their technical capabilities, and I have no doubt about who they are as people like you heard today. Um, and so together, they make so much more than what they are as individuals. And that's the power of diversity, however you look at it. And we have a very diverse crew um, in their traits, their education, with everything, and that's what makes them so powerful. Wonderful. And then can you also talk about where you're seeing this kind of fit into the continuum? Because obviously we'll have Artemis 3 and then hopefully other missions coming very soon after that. So what is Artemis 2 going to do to inform future space missions for the Artemis program and Gateway? Yeah, sure. The, uh, the Artemis missions, you know, they are their steps along the way. And we had Artemis 1, very successful. So at that point, we could test some of the hardware uh, with the SLS and then the, you know, the capsule. But now that we have humans in the capsule, uh, we're going to have a life support system that we, you know, have not yet tested out. And so that, of course, is a big step. Um, of course, we want to get our crew members back safely. And then we take that and then we look at Artemis 2 and this, or Artemis 3 and subsequent. Uh, when we go down to the surface, um, we need to know how this capsule behaves uh, when Gateway gets there. You know, and then we're going to have a mission on how do we rendezvous and dock to the gateway. And then how do we actually get, you know, from orbit down to the surface with uh, HLS. And so all of these are just small steps. And, you know, the order may change around a little bit. But you need all of those to happen for us to be successful with Artemis. And then for us to be successful as we go even farther and go on to Mars. So yeah, a bunch of baby steps will get us there.